All I did was open the sunroom door. <laughs> and I'm getting spied on. Ladies, I don't know what you're expecting here, but I just was trying to get some seed packs. What are you looking at, Beardy? Oh boy. <laughs> I guess they want some seeds. All right, this is a little entertaining. Ladies, I, I have seed. Just give me a second here. But you have to go down. You have to go down the, over the yard for it. Welcome to Condo to Cottage, and today we are going to be looking at week three of the uh, garden tours for 2020. So today is June 22nd, um, and it is a hot one. It's about 90 degrees Fahrenheit out here, and it's warm. Um, I actually shot the tour itself earlier this morning because I knew it was going to be a hot uh, day today, and I'm trying to avoid some sun. Um, I'm very fair skinned, so gardening for the fair skinned person is always interesting. I have to wear this dorky hat when I go out in the middle of the day. Um, but so anyway, I filmed it this morning and I'm super excited to share it with you guys because I feel like week three, um, finally got some, some really good growth in the garden. Um, the weather, we finally got the evenings up out of those low temperatures and the cucumbers are really showing progress um, as well as some of the squash plants that are ginormous. <laughs> They're just huge. Um, and the tomatoes are loving this heat. So really excited to show you guys uh, the garden this week. And I'm also, I'm kind of taking stock of what I need to learn every day that I go out there. You know, I shot a video a few days ago just like what the daily tasks are for a gardener or beginning gardener may not know that information there's so much information i don't know as a still novice gardener um you know so in my growing new varieties of things i'm, I'm gonna go kind of investigate those specific varieties like the squash i have um, but also like my onions that have gone to flower i'm kind of just letting them go see what happens and I want to learn about it and next year when I go to do it again I'm gonna have a lot more information um, and have a you know a solid foundation for for planting those things so super excited for this tour I hope you guys enjoy it if you haven't already you can like and uh, like the video and then you can subscribe to the channel I post garden tours every Monday Monday or Tuesday um, and just to share in this adventure of gardening and uh, also with our, our chickens. So um, like and subscribe and that would be great and I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, so we're gonna start our, our uh, this week's garden tour over here with my kale patch. It's looking really good. Um, I think I might have some cabbage, cabbage worms in here, but um, <laughs> if you might have seen, I've had some chickens get into the garden. So um, it's been, it's been a, a rough week with that, but this, I do see some evidence that it could be a cabbage worm, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on that guy. Um, but in general, this patch is looking really good, and I actually have two volunteer tomato plants in here and a lemon balm that I'm going to just leave because when the kale starts to go to seed, I'm probably going to rip it out, and then I'll have tomato plants that will be later in the season when they start coming um, to fruit. So it's always, it's like succession sowing where you plant some and then you, um, you harvest and then, you know, a few, like, I don't know, I would say four weeks after you plant the first round, you'd plant the second round of tomatoes so that, um, you'd get the harvest in, you know, you'd get a whole second harvest. Um, so these here are all those volunteer tomato plants that I left. It's like a row of them. And I have not pruned them. I'm just like kind of letting them go. I haven't even staked them. Um, so far, so good. Just kind of experimenting with these guys because I didn't even plant them. They have 
blossoms coming up so that's exciting um but i have no idea what kind of tomato they are i believe they're a cherry tomato because that's what i had last year um so we'll see so then my beans here check out all these bean blossoms super exciting so beans just like anything else they're gonna get fertilized pollinated and then the little bean is um stalk is gonna come from here or the bean pod and that's the seeds, so they have to be fertilized and then you get the seeds. So these beans are looking pretty good, um, except they're very, very much shadowed by this uh, squash. So I actually did break off one of the leaves yesterday because it was like totally encroaching on my beans. But these leaves, I mean, they're, they're literally, I don't know, 10 hands <laughs> big. Um, and this squash variety, I don't, I have to look and see which squash variety it was, but I'm going to look, um, and I'll put that on the screen if I can find it. But I totally underestimated how big this guy would get. I have two of them here and it oh. is like, it's, you know, five feet across the garden, um, that they take up. So definitely, uh, going to have to give that guy more room next year. <laughs> um, but you know, you live and you learn. Lulu, who are you barking at, babe? So this cucumber was the one that I transplanted from inside that I started over the winter, just like my tomato, I did that because I was so worried about losing my cucumbers um, with that frost. And it definitely had some transplant shock, which I, if you look at last week's video, um, the fruit, I almost thought it had blossom end rot because the fruit just was not, it was like browning really easily. But now I've got some yummy looking cucumbers here. So that's awesome. And these cucumbers are the pickling cucumbers. So you, you pick them small and they have a softer um, skin. And so you can just snack on them, right, with the skin on there. You don't have to peel it. Um, I mean, some people don't peel their, their slicer cucumbers, but I do because I don't like the really thick skin. But these cucumbers, though, the ones that I um, planted from seed um, this season are really, this week, man, that, did they take off. That is just goes to show how fast things happen in the garden. Um, I feel like last week they were like up to here and now they're up to here and they are just loving it. They've loved this weather. It's been warm for sure. Like today's going to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit and they um, really love it. But I mean, <laughs> cucumbers are finicky though, because when it gets too, too hot, then they start to not do so well, but they're loving this weather right now. So I will take it and it's like 10 o'clock and you can see how much um, shade my garden still has um, you might be able to see so basically this whole back half is in the shade um, so I'm learning you know this is something you would normally do and learn about prior to planting the garden <laughs> I knew that back corner was gonna get a lot of shade which is why the, the cold weather cold weather crops are back there but I wasn't expecting the whole rest of it to get as much shade um, and see the tricky part is we have these trees here and they grow every year. So every year, the the sunlight, I th feel like it kind of encroaches a little bit back. Um, so, you know, it's it's something you learn learn from and see what happens. But these cucumbers are certainly loving the... Look at this chicken just like waiting here. What are you doing, girlfriend? I'm not giving you any food. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're really loving the, the trellis here. Check out these onion flowers. I feel like they're really cool. I'm kind of just leaving them and experimenting with them. These onions. These were just ones that went in the pantry. I didn't grow them from seed. So I've got a few of them and they're all... At this point, I'm just kind of wondering what the inside of the flower, the allium flower, is going to look like. I think it's going to be really pretty. So, um, so this patch here is looking pretty empty because I took the cauliflower out. All the radishes grew and we picked them. So I actually have a ground cherry that's growing here. But I'm thinking also, she's back. She's like, what are you going to give me? Um, there's two eggplants under these huge squash. I think I'm going to try and move them. Um, I don't want to move them because I don't want them to shock. But they are not going to grow well there being in the shadow of that gigantic squash plant. So I think I'm going to transplant them here. And then I'm also going to grow uh, some Swiss chard because if you look... The lettuce starts to get really wilty. This I just picked these off a few minutes ago. And um, when it gets super hot, um, this is how these lettuces grow. They get like a stalk. It's kind of neat when you see it like that. Um, it's how kale grows too. This one with the 
this guy is like really crazy. I can't even, I think it would probably head up almost. Um, but yeah, so these guys, um, are not their best. We're still getting salads out of them. We got salads this weekend from them and they were delicious, but they have a limited number of days. Swiss chard on the other hand though, does, um, continue through the summer. So I'm going to plant some today. I think if I can get out here from, take a little break from work, um, and get some seeds in the ground because I would like to be able to still have our, our, um, Swiss chard or to have like leafy greens throughout the summer. Um, nothing's better than a fresh summer salad, you know, and this lettuce has just seen better days. So these beets though, let me tell you, we picked up a beet from here. I'm going to put the name, I'm going to go inside and find the name of this variety. Um, I did not thin them out enough, um, because I, I think some of them when I did thin weren't fully grown, like the seed, the, uh, greens weren't up yet so I didn't even know they were there so we picked a small one the other day you can see how big they are if you kind of move the dirt around um we picked one yesterday and just cut it up on the salad it was sweet just raw raw beet and it was so good I was like okay well I'm definitely going to grow these again um if you saw the other day my chickens I've we've had a few chicken incidents getting in here so Definitely some chicken damage. They kind of squash where they walk. Um, but I believe I have two ver varieties of beets. So I got to see what's going on in there. But the carrots also. Um, so the really, look at these carrot flowers. They were so pretty. Um, they're the same, like uh, Queen Anne's lace is like wild carrot. Um, but the really interesting thing is, is I've been researching what to do when carrots go to flower. But everything I'm seeing says that carrots go to flower in their second year. This is their first year, so I don't know what's going on there. I got a, the science brain in me, the, the biology brain's like, what's happening? These are not a bi, like they're supposed to be a biannual, but this is their first year. So who knows? I'm going to continue to look into that. These tomatoes on this trellis are looking really good, which is good considering they get a lot of shade in the morning. Getting some flowers. They look how healthy and happy. Um looking at some of these blooms looking really pretty see these little suckers I have not done enough time out here in the garden to pull these suckers off so what winds up happening is they get these big um they get to be these big guys so you can still pull these off but I'm just kind of kind of let them go because now I can trellis them more effectively but they're looking good looking healthy which is awesome um and behind them is my kale patch another side of it and that right there looks to me to be damaged from a cabbage worm. But I was just looking and I didn't see any in there. So I do see some chicken damage. So I'm going to check out that plant. Chicken went to town on that guy. Um, so we'll see what happens with that kale. I might have to pull more of it out because of those cabbage worms or dust it uh, with some of that um, organic insect dust. Um, these sugar snap peas are getting, P.S., sorry about my thumb. I cut my thumb like a child. I was cutting a bagel. Like, you should know how to cut a bagel by the time you're 33, but well, I forgot. <laughs> so, anyway, these are getting flowers, which is so exciting because the flowers are super pretty. They almost, they remind me of like a snapdragon. They're so cute. So, I honestly don't even care at this point if this starts... Now that the flowers are out, I might get, I'm going to get some sugar snap peas, but they're just so pretty that aesthetically I'm happy with how they're growing. So the goal with this um, sugar snap pea is that it's going to go up and trellis over and the same thing with that. And that these tendrils are just like really pretty, they like hanging down. Um, so that's the goal with that. Oh, it's the worst when you're in the trellis and you see right above your head a little, a little spider hanging. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to go on this side of that spider. So these tomatoes, I came out yesterday and I was trellising some more. I got it under a little bit more control, but they are still pretty, pretty darn crazy. There's just too many on this trellis. I just was overzealous after that freeze. I planted more than I should have, but that's okay. I'm just going to keep pruning them so that they don't get too crowded. So the goal with the pruning is that you're, you're first of all, continuing to have one main stem, but also so that your plants have a lot of airflow so that they don't get 
um, you know, the humidity doesn't get trapped in there. So like if you look underneath here, it's, it's very packed. It's very dense. You don't want the humidity to get trapped. It can cause blight, which um, is not good for your tomato plants. So these are all looking really healthy though. This is the one from inside that I started in the winter. So it's got a lot of fruit on it, which is awesome. Um, lots of flowers too, which is good. So with the with watering, like this last week we had really nice weather, but it was pretty dry. Um, and it kept saying like, oh, to, you know, the forecast kept saying chance of rain tomorrow. Well, we just never wound up getting rain. Um, I think fr Friday we finally had some rain. When your tomatoes start to curl, like when the leaves start to curl up, that's when you want to water them. You don't want to overwater your tomatoes. Um, they, when they get a little bit of stress, that's when their roots are going to grow deeper. So if you kind of let them get a little bit drier, the roots are going to grow deeper. And then when you water them, they're going to absorb a lot of that water and be really healthy. Now, the only problem with that is if you have a slicer variety of tomato, they might crack. If you get too much water and they absorb it really fast, That what that's what leads to cracking in those tomatoes. So you do want to watch that. Like anytime you have a big rainstorm, you want to go out and either pick the fruit before the rainstorm or pick it like as soon as you can because that way you're going to have less of a chance of those tomatoes splitting. Um, so yeah, those are pretty crazy, but I'm going to pr probably prune them up a little bit more. Here's another squash, not nearly as big as the other one. I mean, pretty big, don't get me wrong, but not as big as that other one. Um, and then here's another one here. So, oh, this is exciting, guys. Look. Oh, I got a little baby, a little baby squash on this one. I think this is, don't know what, it might be the Rondonese squash. But that is the first time I noticed that. How fun. <laughs> This is cool too. The cauliflower that went to seed, now it's got these like little seed pods. So I think I can leave these, harvest them. I gotta look into that. I think I can harvest those seeds then and save them. Um, so yeah, these squash, that's super exciting. These tomatoes, I noticed the other day, I was out here yesterday. I'm not sure if these are little aphids. Um, I'm not sure if you can see these like little purple bugs. I gotta look. So, they've got something going on. Let's see if I can get a closer look. Here you go. So, I don't know what that guy is, but I'm going to probably try and get rid of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. See all those? I'm going to have to, I think, get a hose and spray the underside. You want to be careful with tomatoes in doing that. You know, you don't like to water the foliage on them because they can get that blight a little bit faster with that extra water on the leaves. They're always good to water at the base, but I want to get rid of those bugs, whatever they are. I think I'm just going to cut off that branch and feed it to the chickens, keep it away from... The rest of the garden here all right so these tomatoes are the ones i transplanted i am going to probably move these to that trellis because there's a lot less going on um and then that will give my melons down here a fighting chance cantaloupe and kajari melons they're definitely doing better but they're totally getting crowded um for sunlight so i'm gonna probably move these container bags over to that side those were volunteer tomatoes so it's okay I don't really care where they go let's see if this squash has any and a bib is oh there's like a little tiny tiny one underneath right there that's exciting so cool finally some squash babies so row of tomatoes some marigolds here um, really good to companion plant with your tomatoes. They haven't flowered yet because I've grown from seed late, but and then these are the eggplant. I'm gonna retreat these. Got a lot of um, leaves coming up on the bottom though. So much healthier than those ones on the other side that are being shadowed. We used this purple basil this weekend, and we so what we did is we pinched the top because it, it triggers them to grow more bushy, and 
Um, they were so good. Oh my goodness. If you want to try more basil varieties, that is a purple opal basil. So good. Here's more eggplant. Peppers. This pepper is doing really well. Um, so they're looking okay. I mean, they're definitely not as big as I would like them to be, but that's okay. And there's just another rogue tomato. <laughs> it's the story of this year, the rogue tomatoes. Um, so yeah, so that's basically this whole garden. Chamomile's still doing good. Got to pick some more flowers today. Um, going to plant some Swiss chard and then go from there. So come on, Lou, are you going to come out? Ted? They're like, oh, we're we going back inside so I can rela relax. They're the laziest, laziest dogs in the world. Here's my two zinnias that I'm so happy I have because they're my only zinnias I have, disappointingly. Um, and these might be some ground cherries that are growing. So yeah, the back side of that tomato patch is crazy. Um, then over here, I have... We planted some potatoes in these ones. We'll see what happens with them. No idea. Um, some more sugar snap peas. They're getting a lot of sun, so they might not. But you can see how much more sun this area gets where we originally had the two trellises. We had the other trellis over here last year in the front. And, I mean, that whole thing is already in the sun for hours now. And this part is still getting some, some shade. So, um, you know... You live, you learn. <laughs> These tomatoes are doing okay, and the marigolds. It's really all I have over here, so I'm going to put some more tomatoes on the inside of my trellis to, to take some stress off of that trellis there because it's just got so much going on. Check out these wildflowers. They're pretty crazy looking. This whole area makes me insane, but... These things that I thought were um, lamb's ear, they're called mullein, I think, and... They're pretty crazy looking. They're in invasive, but they, um, the flowers on them are at least the flower that the pollinators can have. And I kind of wanted to see what they do. And they are, look at these. They're like eight feet tall, <laughs> maybe seven. They're pretty crazy. Um, so I'm kind of just leaving them because I uh, figured more pollinators can't hurt, right? So mark my words, I'm probably going to regret that. Um, and my hydrangeas are slow to come back, but, um, that's okay. So I'll have some tomatoes over here. These guys are looking okay too. Everybody's looking healthy. Yay! Garden tour week three. I have baby squash. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go inside and investigate what all of those, uh, types of of varieties are because as I've said to you before I kind of just went crazy planting stuff when I lost things to the frost I had everything so neat and labeled and then I just went and sowed a bunch of seeds and I have no idea what they are so I'm going to investigate those and put put some labels on them if I can in the video um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this and if you have not started your your garden yet get outside, put some tomato seeds in the ground, put some cucumber seeds in the ground. There is still plenty of time uh, to get some produce that you yourself grew. Uh, plant some, some uh, Swiss chard. It will grow in the summer. Um, and, you know, have some fun. Plant some flowers. Plant some things that you enjoy looking at that you can cut and throw in a vase um, in your house. Just things to, to liven up your, your day and your kitchen. Um, so I would, you know, get out there and do that. All right, guys, I will see you later this week. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day.